if you have your Bibles with you tonight. I would ask you to turn to, if I was asked to pick one verse out of the Old Testament and one verse out of the New Testament, this would be my verse out of the Old Testament to live by. I believe you can take this and anything God's done for us, anything God will do for us, anything in your life, I believe you can answer it and tie it back to Proverbs chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 5 in a minute. Very familiar scripture. You can probably quote it. You probably learned it in Sunday school when you were a child, but I think you'll all agree back before the television turned totally against Christianity. Yeah, I can remember back when I was a little boy, I loved to watch ball games, and you got one ball game a week, and that was on Saturday. And then they come along with Monday night football and that kind of stuff, and boy, I just thought that was the cat's meow. But if you remember back then, they would show shots of the crowd, and there would always be somebody holding a sign with what verse? John 3.16. That is probably, I think you'll agree with me, the most well-known verse by the world. If you look at John 3.16, it says he, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. Now, if you take that verse for, for what it is, and pretty much that's the gospel, you can pretty much tie the gospel up into that verse. God so loved us that he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross and pay a penalty for us that we could not pay. It was above our means, and he paid it for us, and that if we would believe in him, that we'd have everlasting life. So it pretty much sums it up. If you believe that verse tonight, if, if that is true to you, in a minute, I'm going to ask you why it's hard for us to live by Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. But how this message started, we talked about it in uh, Bible study Wednesday night. Another famous pastor fell by the wayside. And I, I thought, you know, there's so many people betraying other people today. So many people betraying the trust. Uh, you know, you, you'd almost have to be blind and deaf not to see it going on. It goes on not just at a, at a high level, but I mean, you know, I just simply started listing the pastors that had fell in the past. And folks, when I say fell, it, it's not that they were just committed sin. Everybody commits sin. But folks, they were living in sin and preaching the word of God. Folks, that, ought, that, that cannot be. But you know, I just sat there and wrote down Tony Evans, Robert Morris, Jimmy Swagger, Jim Baker, Ravi or Ravi Zacharias, Brian Houston. The list just keeps going on and on. Folks, I stopped at that number. There was a whole nother page of them. And just today on my news feed, I saw out of, I believe, Oklahoma, a a uh, youth minister arrested for sexual charges against one of his children. Folks, if you don't think Satan has infiltrated the church, you're blind. Satan has, the only way we keep Satan out, you understand, if you bring Satan in with you, you've brought Satan in the church. We, you are the temple of God. If you have been born again, the Holy Spirit resides in you, and may I tell you, there's not room for the Satan and Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit will not put up with that. But Satan wants in that door. He wants in that door of every church that's meeting. Well, let me put it this way. He wants in the door of the churches that are preaching the Word of God. He wants in the door where there's true believers. He's not worried about the churches that these people were leading because you know what? He's already got them. I told you a few weeks ago, you know, if you study Timothy and what Paul was telling Timothy would happen at the end, you know, he said people would have itching ears. Folks, that's exactly what's going on. People are wanting to be told, I can live in sin 
and still be God's child. No, sir, you cannot. If you have a desire to live in sin, you hear me very clearly. If you have a desire to live in sin, the Holy Spirit does not indwell you. And if the Holy Spirit does not indwell you, you are not saved. I know a lot of people that have, that believe they don't believe about the scripture, but what they want to do is they want to change this to fit their life instead of changing their life to fit God's word. Folks, that does not work. And when you do that, and, and all these pastors that have fallen, I want you to understand tonight why I harp on you studying the word of God and praying for him to give you wisdom in his word because doctrine matters. Amen? This word, it tells us in Hebrew, Jesus Christ was the same yesterday, yesterday, today, and forever. God's word does not change. Remember I told you a few weeks ago, in John, if you read the first of John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That means Jesus Christ is the word, and it does not change. So if you hear preaching and teaching that's contrary to this word, you need to flee from it. Because it tells us in the end that they will flock with itching ears, which means I want to hear what I'm doing is okay, even though it does not line up with the Word of God. And what has happened is why are all these false prophets, I believe, folks, with everything in me, I believe God's moving. And I believe these people are being exposed for a reason right now for a time because I believe it is getting really, really close to him splitting that eastern sky and him calling his church home. And folks, you are the light of this world. I want you to know tonight, if you, Jesus Christ is in your heart, you are what's left of the light. You are what's left. And when that light goes home, folks, this is going to be a dark world. But I believe these people are being exposed for a reason. I believe God has had enough. I believe God has said, you have mocked me. You have made mockery of my word. And folks, I believe they're going to start to fall. I believe the dominoes are lining up. And what I was going to say is Satan was not interested in these churches. Why? Because he already had control of the man behind the pulpit. He was already preaching lies. He was already preaching. And, but how did he get away with it? Because that's what the people wanted to hear. He, God gave the people exactly what they wanted. They wanted a false prophet, and he gave it to them. And why is that? Because in the end, they want, they, they're going to have itching ears. They want their ears to be tickled. They, they don't want their toes stepped on. Folks, I, I've been there. I understand. I know. I tell you all the time. The sermons that God gives to me, he gives them to me for me. Amen? And I just share them with you. As the sister saying, I am a sinner saved by the grace of God, and that I hope that's what you are. And let me tell you something. I wished, I wish I could tell you that I didn't sin this week, but you know what I did? Sometimes I open my mouth and sometimes I say things I shouldn't. Sometimes I think things I shouldn't. But you know what the difference is in me now and me 20 years ago? Is I put it under the blood. The Holy Spirit convicts me almost instantly. Because, folks, you're not gonna, we're not going to be perfect down here. Paul made that very clear. There was only one perfect, and his name was Jesus Christ. But, folks, we can be better than we are now. Amen? And we can be better tomorrow than we were yesterday. We can get closer and closer. But you see, how about in your personal life? Have you ever been let down? Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever let somebody down? We all have, amen? There's only one that will never let anybody down. He will never betray us. He will never disappoint us. And his name is Jesus Christ. That's why we must lean on him. You see, these people, I, I saw a clip today. Uh, today was the first... Uh, Sunday since Robert Morris has stepped down. And you remember there was 100,000 people under his ministry. I don't know if y'all checked the board today, but we didn't reach 100,000. <laughs> That's a lot of people. Folks, that is a powerful platform. And they were just acting, some of them were acting destroyed. Folks, let me tell you something. If you put your faith in a man, you are subject to be destroyed. But if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he'll never fail you. He'll never fail you. And I, I'll tell you this all the time. 
But here's the way you look at it. Would any one of you want us to have a screen up here and just show your thoughts of, through the week? I don't want it. <laughs> Why? Because we're flesh, amen? But, but, the Bible tells us if we're born again, old things are gone away and we become new. Our thoughts ought to start getting better, amen? You cannot dwell in the old. You got to start seeking the new. But I want to tie these two verses with you tonight because, like I said, most people can even quote, even people in the world can quote, can quote John 3, 16. I believe it, and I hope tonight you believe it. But turn, if that is true, which I believe it is, let me ask you this before I read you the scripture. With an amen in here, is anybody guilty of worrying? Amen. Stand with me tonight if you found Proverbs chapter 3. And I'm going to start in verse number 5, and I don't know how far I'm going to read, but I'm going to read a while. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5. Now, you remember, we've already covered that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If he would do that, you see why we can... This verse means more to us. Trust, verse number five. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. <clears throat> Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this day that you've blessed us with. We thank you, Lord, that you gave us tonight the health for each one of us to be here. And Lord, we just pray for those that cannot, that would love to be here tonight. We pray that you'd touch them tonight in a special way. And Lord, we pray a lot tonight, Lord, that you touch the ones that chose not to be here tonight. We pray that you touch their hearts in a way that would convict them, Lord, and lead them to you. Lord, we pray for those that are living in this world without you, Lord. We just pray for your convicting power in their hearts and in their lives where they would see, God, how much they need you and come running and be saved. Lord, everybody in here, we all have loved ones and friends that are lost, and tonight that is our top prayer. Please, Lord, save our children, save our friends, God. I just pray you convict them in a way where they cannot resist it, God. And Lord, I just pray that we, the ones that know you, God, that we would live in a way that would lead them to you. And God, we ask tonight that all this be done in your name. And Lord, now it comes to the preaching of your word. And Father, I ask you from the bottom of my heart that you'd forgive me of my sins, God. Please cleanse this vessel. And tonight, Holy Spirit, I pray you rise up in me and speak through me tonight the words that you'd have spoken. And God, I pray that you would open up the ears of our hearts and our minds and let us hear your word, Lord, and sink, sink it into us, God, and help us take it from here, Lord, and share it with this world. And in Jesus' precious name, his church prayed. Amen. Now, this is absolutely, if I had a life verse, this would be it. This answers so many questions, so many situations. If we would just simply trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding and acknowledge him, he would direct us in our paths. Amen? Now, folks, what do we tend to trust? What we can see? That's because we're human beings. That we tend to trust what we can see. Now, this is kind of a, a dual edge here. I don't believe anybody in this room, I don't believe anybody alive today has locked eyes with Jesus Christ. I don't believe, but... I do believe we've seen God. And you say, how can you say that? Are you a child of God tonight? Amen. Is the Holy Spirit indwelling you? Guess what? I've seen God's children. And who's made in his image? So in a way, we've seen God. And can you look at White Oak Mountain and tell me you cannot see God? 
You can see God if you look for God. Amen? If you're in any situation in your life, you can look at the bad or you can look at the good. And tonight I'm telling you, I choose to look at the good. And any situation you find, you can see God if you'll look for God. Amen? Now, you can see the bad. We can see the bad all day long. And folks, let's just be honest. Which one's easier? It's easier to see the bad. And when we look at each other, is it easier to tear each other apart or lift each other up? It's easier to tear each other apart. Why is that? Because we're flesh. That's how we're born. Folks, I'm going to be honest with you. You won't hear a lot of people say this, but if you study the Bible, you'll know this is true. It is easier to live in this world as a sinner than it is a saint. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're a sinner, the enemy ain't attacking you. He ain't worried about you. He's got you. But the minute you give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ, who starts coming after you full force? Satan. Because he don't want you sharing the good news. Oh, how many times we listen to him when we shouldn't. But I want you to know tonight, no matter what you're going through, whether you have health issues, whether you have financial issues, whether you've got trouble on the job, whether you have trouble at school, whether your marriage is in trouble, no matter what you're going through, trust God and his word. I cannot say that any clearer. Tonight, you must remember, if you are his child, if you've truly given your heart and soul to him, now, listen to me. I'm talking about if you're truly born again. I've told you this. I don't like terms. I don't like sayings people put on, you know, what the big one you hear, once saved, always saved. I don't like terms like that. But let me tell you what the Bible says. If you truly, truly give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ, no man can pluck you out of God's hand. No man. You are sealed. You are redeemed. But let me tell you what's happening. Satan is convincing a lot of people they're saved and they don't know Jesus Christ. Because if you, this like when I was 13 years old, I've told you this time and time again, but I will go to my grave saying it. When that preacher told me, and I was three rows back, 13 years old, son, say, repeat after me and you're saved. No, you're not. It takes more than words. I said those words, and then I went right back into sin with no conviction, no, no heart, no, nothing. But if I'd listened to him and died and faced Jesus, because you will face Jesus. I don't care if you believe in him or not. You're going to face him. And I'd have faced him. And he'd have said, depart from me. I never knew you. And I said, wait a minute, Jesus. When I was 13 at vacation Bible school, I said exactly what that preacher said to me. And he just said, depart from me, I never knew you. Because I didn't give my heart to God. I was not convicted of my sin. I gave it lip service. You know what? God also describes that as lukewarm. He will spew you out. But you see, if you're truly his child, that's what I want you to... If you truly have a relationship with Christ, and I had a brother ask me this the other day, how do I know? This is the best way I can tell you. A lot of people say I believe in God, but their lives do not show it. If you truly believe in God, things change. And I'm not saying you live a sin-free life. We can't do that. But like I said earlier, if you're, if you're unsure about your salvation, check and see how you feel about your sin. That's how you know. If you can sin and it don't bother you, I'm good, you better check yourself. But if you sin and it breaks your heart because you know what he did for you, and now that's what, if it doesn't break your heart, friend, you better check yourself. But if it breaks your heart and you beg him to forgive you, friend, I feel good about your salvation. If that's where you're at, then you're his child and he loves you and he, he, he has what's best for you. And he knows what tomorrow holds. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that when Jesus Christ, 
was nailed to that cross, he knew that this group right here would be in this church tonight on June 23rd, 2024. Without a doubt, church, he knows all. Guess what? He knows what's in your mind right now. So if you're thinking ugly thoughts about your pastor right now, he knows it. He's convicting. If you're thinking, I wish he'd shut up, I'm hungry, I want to go home and eat. He knows that. But seriously, folks, that's why it does no good to play church. That's why it does no good for me to fool you or to you to fool me. What good does that do? God knows the intent of our heart. But listen, he's always there. Have you heard people say, I just wish God would come near? Folks, God's right where he's always been. I liken it to this. I was, oh gosh, this has been many years ago, back when I gave the sharks a chance to eat me. But I was, I was laying on one of those tubes and not paying any attention. And then I looked up and I had floated quite a ways from the shore. I do not like that. You can ask my family, they'll back me up. But folks, that's exactly how we are with God. God's on the shore. God does not move. And get this, if we'll keep a hold of his hand, the current does not take us out. And the current is the world, folks. And believe me, you don't have to do nothing to drift. Catch what I said? You don't have to do anything to drift, which means if you're sitting still, if you're in neutral, you're backsliding. Because when we turn loose to God's hand, which way you think that world's going to take us? Farther and farther. But always remember, God never moved. We moved. So if you want to be close to God, it's up to you. Like Brother Rod said in his testimony, we can have as much God as we want. It's up to us. But you see, he is always there. Listen to Psalms 139, 6 and 7. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I flee from thy presence? Where can you go to get away from God? Do you remember a prophet in the Old Testament that wondered that? Jonah. Whether it was a fish or a whale, I don't care. Something big swallowed him, all right? He's a big old fish and he's underwater. Folks, let me tell you something. If a big old fish swallows me, whoo, I'm going to be calling out to God, amen? If I get deep enough water for a big old fish to swallow me, I'm going to be calling out for God. But Jonah thought, you know, he tried to run from God. I don't even have to ask. Everybody in this room in our life has sometimes tried to run from God. I did it for quite a while. Isn't it nice, though, when we stop and he's still right there? He's everywhere. You see, we struggle. Now, I want you to understand, I'm not saying this is all the time because we live in a fallen world, amen? So bad things are just going to happen down here. But did you know we can also call some of our own struggles? We struggle a lot of the time because we go off of what we can see instead of what he says. There's a saying out there, I, th I think David Jeremiah penned it, I don't know, but it says, don't forget in the dark what you learned in the light. Where's the light? Between the covers of your Bible. This word is alive, folks. This word, I know you're like me. I can read the same verse three times and get get something different from me three different times. Depends on what I'm going through in my life at that time. And God can just use his word just to speak to my heart. But you see, when we turn loose of his hand, folks, I can promise you that the struggle is going to ensue. We talked this morning about a crutch. How some people, and folks, let's just be honest, we live in a dark world where I mean, just in Fordyce, Arkansas. I mean, folks, that could have been Hector. Fordyce isn't much bigger than Hector, and then somebody just walks in there and starts shooting people at the grocery store. 
four dead, 11 or 12 shot, shot two cops. I can't tell you why. But folks, Fordyce, Arkansas is not three hours from here. We live in a dark world. We live in a world where just this week, the pastor of, if not the largest congregation in the United States, the second, one of the top two, resigned due to child molestation. We live in a dark world. Who is the prince of the air right now? Satan. Now, this is just a side note, but can you imagine after God calls his children home how dark this world's going to be? I heard an old preacher say one time, that's going to be the devil's holiday. The devil's going to get a holiday for seven years. And then it's all over, folks. That's all he gets. And then our God comes back in the clouds. And if you hadn't read the end of the story, let me tell you. He defeats him with the breath of his mouth. Our Savior speaks the words and defeats the enemy. That's how powerful our God is. But you see, these struggles, it's because we, we trust what we can see more than we trust God. Now this, what I'm fixing to tell you, is not, it's not biblical. I'm just telling you this is my own personal opinion, so you understand. I believe that Abraham and Sarah would have had Isaac when he was 88 years old. I believe that with everything in me. You know why I believe that? Because he, because he had Ishmael at 87. God had promised him and Sarah a son, a child. But they were going off what they could see instead of what he said. And Sarah's like, you know, hey, this ain't going to happen. Go into Hagar, go into my... And so they gave in. And Abraham was 87 years old because 13 years later, he had Isaac. I believe if they'd have waited one more year, now, this is not in Scripture. I'm just telling you, this is, this is my opinion. I believe their blessing was almost there. I believe so many times we give up when God's right around the corner. He's fixing to deliver his promise, and we give up. I can tell you tonight, I told you this morning, don't quit fighting. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. No matter what the circumstances are, don't give up. 1 Samuel 16, 7. Again, I want you to know, go on what he said, not on what you can see. 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. You see, David wasn't the tallest of the sons. He wasn't the fairest of the sons. Matter of fact, he was the least. He's the youngest. And he, did you notice? They run them all by him, except David. He's out there tending sheep. God said, whoa, wait a minute. I don't look on the outside. I look on the inside. You see, I praise God that he don't look on the outside. Because if he did, and stature, height was a requirement, my last name's not Stanick. I wouldn't be your pastor. <laughs> he allows us that's vertically challenged the honor of preaching his word. But folks, let's just be honest tonight. How many of us look on the outside so many times? Have you ever just seen somebody and, and just kind of wrote them off and then start to talk to them like, wow, what a blessing I would have missed. And I told you this a few weeks ago, but I just, I like the video because it, it it's a worldly video, but, but it speaks to my, it speaks to my heart. 
the school janitor on America's Got Talent had walked up there and they all just kind of, I mean, he's very nice, but they all just kind of wrote him off because he didn't look like he could do anything. And then all of a sudden he opened his mouth and you're like, wow. You see, God doesn't look on the outside. And this is what scares me because there's a lot of people and folks, I don't have to point this out to you. You, you know I, I'm required to tell you the truth. You can look on that board. There was a lot more people here this morning than there is tonight. That worries me. It, it, it gives me heart, heartache. And, and Adrian Rogers, I, I, I love him dearly. And as, as far as a man goes, as a minister, I probably had more faith in him than any minister I, I've ever heard or, or, or listened to. And I know he's with God now, but you know he, he would flat out tell his church, if your faith won't get you to church, I doubt your faith will get you to heaven. Folks, there's a lot of truth in that. And you can ask any pastor, Sunday night, the attendance just disappears. There's a lot of churches that have canceled Sunday night. God help us. How are we going to answer Jesus for that? When we, God, we just didn't have time on Sunday night. We was just too busy. And I'm not saying you have to go to church to go to heaven. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're going to heaven, you ought to want to go to church. I will say that. But you see, the Bible says, well, Jesus says, you're like a whited sepulcher. On the outside, you're painted and pretty, but on the inside, you're full of dead man's bones. Folks, I believe that a, if the rapture was today, there would be a lot of people left sitting in pews. There would be a lot of preachers left standing behind the pulpit. There would be a lot of uh, music leaders. There would be a lot of Sunday school teachers. There would be a lot of people who thought they knew Jesus Christ but never did. And that breaks my heart, which means we've got work to do to, to share the good news. But you see, Satan... He is so good at getting us to see some things. Fear, doubt, hate, jealousy, any of those four, or any of those four godly? Absolutely not. God tells us over and over and over, fear not, trust him, love, and instead of jealousy, what does he tell us to do? Take care of each other. I'm supposed to put you above me. You're supposed to put your neighbor above you. So, but Satan, you realize he's the exact opposite. He's really good at getting us to see those things, and God is just standing there asking that we trust him and believe that he has us. And he does, and he will show us if we ask. I want to close with this scripture and this story. It's probably my favorite story out of the Old Testament, and I've shared it with you a couple times, but it just, ooh. I, I love it. Anybody in here believe that God can do anything he wants to? Amen. I, I told you this story, but this is the best way. I told you when my grandmother died, Cassie was, was little. I think she was two. The only reason my grandma lived those last two years is because Cassie was born. I promise you. And I really thought I was something in Grandma's eyes till I had Cassie. And then we all took a step back. <laughs> we, we, we went down in that pecking order, but that's okay. But now you... I don't put God in any box. The only thing God cannot do is lie. God is perfect. And as we were leaving the cemetery that day, my two-year-old daughter was waving. And I said, who are you waving at, baby? And she said, Grandma. I said, oh, you're waving at the grave? And she said, no, I'm waving at Grandma. I don't care who you are. I'll tell you what I believe. I believe God allowed her to see her one more time and to wave goodbye. Because she's a two-year-old child. Who's going to believe a two-year-old child? Childlike faith, my friend. I've got childlike faith because I believe that's what my God done. Whether it's for my grandma, 
whether it's for Cassie, I don't know. Maybe it was for me. I believe God sends angels to visit certain people before they die, don't you? How many times have you heard somebody say they're speaking to the man in the corner? Some people say, oh, well, you're just medicated. <laughs> no, I say you're saved, amen? I say you're blessed, and I say he sends angels to take us home. I don't put my God in a corner. But the story I'm fixing to read to you tonight, if you believe in God and you believe in the power, after tonight, if you truly do and you hear this story, we won't doubt. We won't fear anymore. God had a servant. His name was Elisha. Elisha had a young man with him. And they had reached a point where they were surrounded by the enemy. They were fearing for their life. Many, many horses and chariots, they were all against them. Those chariots and those horses, I want you to understand tonight, they represent the world. The world was against them. Then Elisha, like this morning, I told you, David knew something that we needed to know. Well, let me tell you something. Elisha knew something that we need to know tonight. Elisha prayed, God, let my friend see what I see. And you know what? Elisha saw the truth. Do you believe in God tonight? Then I'm fixing to share the truth with you. Second Kings chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Remember, seeing with your eyes and believing in your heart. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Listen to this. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Folks, that ought to make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. God, Elisha prayed. God opened his eyes. Now listen to me. You get this tonight. The young man was not blind. The young man could see. He could physically see. He saw the enemy's horses and chariots. But Elisha knew something. He knew the truth. He said, God, open his eyes. Please get that tonight. And God opened his eyes. And what did he see? He saw the truth. He saw the God's army. And there was far more than there was of the world. The horses and the chariots of fire surrounded them. Folks, let me tell you something. My prayer for you tonight is that God opened your eyes so you can see his angels standing around about you ready to fight the enemy. No matter what the enemy's telling you tonight, no matter what he's doing to you tonight, let me tell you something. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Folks, you've got an army. And I pray tonight with everything in me, God, open our eyes and let us see the truth. Let us see those horses. Let us see those chariots. Let us know that the ground we stand on is holy ground. Amen? Amen. And folks, we do not. You understand, the foe that we are fighting is a defeated foe. He was crushed when Jesus Christ died on that cross and that veil was torn from top to bottom folks satan had no more of power he was ripped he was defeated he knows he's on limited time the time he has now you hear me is granted to him by our father and when our father says enough folks satan's done amen and you know why we're still here you know why god hadn't said that's enough because he's patient that no one should perish. God wants everybody to be saved. Now, I've read the scripture, and I understand. Unfortunately, most people that live on this earth are going to go to hell. He's very clear in Matthew. Straight is the gate, and there is the way, and few be there that find it. But that way to hell, it's broad, it's easy, and many go therein. didn't say a few, it said many. Many and few. That tells me only a few is going to make the right choice. And folks, now I, I pray tonight that you've made the right choice, but listen to me. If you have tonight, you have a calling. And that is to go out as long as you've got breath in your body. You may say, well, I, I'm older now, and I, I don't care what you are. If God's in you, you are a weapon against Satan. Amen? 
You need to speak. You need to stand. You need to read. You need to believe. And you need to pray. Folks, there is power in prayer. And I want to leave you with this. Do you believe Hebrews 13, 8? Do you believe that it, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? I certainly do. Well, do you believe that God of the Old Testament is God of, God of today? Do you believe that God, through Moses, parted the Red Sea? Are you sure you believe that? Are you sure that he could really make the water separate and let, let them right, walk through on dry ground? Now, come on, now, that sounds crazy. And I've heard a college professor say during that time of year at that place, the water would have only been ankle deep. Maybe so. It's more impressive. God drowned a whole Egyptian army in ankle deep water. Pretty impressive. Amen. Bring it on. Try God. But listen to me. I got great news for you. If you believe that, if you believe Jesus Christ bled and died on that cross for you, and you confess it with your mouth, you're saved. Believing takes your life. Hear me tonight. Your faith comes from your hips more than your lips. It's how you live, amen? You live how you believe. And I'm going, But here's what I want to leave you with tonight. If you believe that, did you know those same horses, those same chariots, and those same angels that surrounded Elisha and his young servant surround you tonight. Did you know they surround this church tonight? If we could look up on this mountain, if we could look up on White Oak Mountain, if God would open our eyes to see the truth for just a brief time, we would see the armies of God standing ready to protect his children. I hope you sleep in peace tonight. And if you're not his child, I hope you don't sleep at all. I hope you are tore up. Because, folks, I don't want anybody to perish. Anybody. I felt that when I thought that my dad went to hell because I didn't share the scripture. I can't tell you how that pressure felt in my chest. I don't want that for anyone. Share the word of God. And how do you share? You say, well, I don't know scripture. Share what he's done for you. And more importantly, live it in front of them. That's how you win people to Christ. Because when all hell breaks loose in your life and you're just sitting there praising God, they're going to come to you and go, what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm going home someday. That's how you win people to Christ. If you would stand with me all over this building tonight. And I just want to ask you, I will never leave here without asking you, if you drew your last breath right now, do you know that your next breath would be with God in heaven? Do you know that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life? Do you have that assurance? Friend, that is an assurance that you can have. God grants that to you. Don't be like me when I was younger. Don't fall into the trap that all you got to say some words and then that's it. That's not true, folks. Like I said this morning, you can't change to get in, but once you get in, you will change. Do you need Christ in your life tonight? And if you do, I want you to think about it very seriously. No music, no emotion. It is a decision that you must make for your life. And you don't have to be in church to be saved. You can be saved on a tractor. You can be saved in a tree stand. You, I, but you've got to make that decision. If you're here tonight and you need prayer for any reason, we'll pray with you and we'll believe.